In the second part of the story, we learnt about how Abukir insults Abushir, the barber. And later when he comes to know about Abushir's fame and hammam, he visits Abushir pretending to be a true friend and suggests him to use arsenic and lime as the bathing paste. The rest of the story is as follows. From the hammam, Abukir went straight to the king and told him, Your Highness, it is my duty to warn you of danger. You had built an excellent hammam and it deserves all praise. But the man to whom you have entrusted it means you harm. There cannot be any doubt that he planned this hammam only to poison you. You will know it yourself when you learn his story. Myself and this man once happened to become prisoners of a certain sultan. I obtained my freedom by pleasing the sultan with my capacity to dye clothes in various colors. But this barber could not get his freedom or that of his wife and children by any means. In the end, the Sultan set him free on condition that he came to your kingdom, started a hammam and destroyed you with paste of deadly poison. When he finishes his job, he will be able to get his wife and children freed and the Sultan will occupy your kingdom. Paste of poison? said the king. Abusir never applied it to my body. That is why your highness is still hale and healthy, replied Abukir. Someday he is bound to apply the death paste containing white arsenic. He may say it is a depilatory. I have warned your highness out of anxiety for your safety. It is better to be on your guard. Having poisoned the king's mind, Abukir left. The king's regard for the barber was turned to seething rage. The very next day he went to Hammam with his slaves. Abusir welcomed him with great respect. He massaged the king himself and then brought some paste to apply to the king's body. Here was the poison Abukir spoke of. What is that? The king asked him sharply. It is a depilatory paste, Abusir replied. The king smelled the paste and found it to contain arsenic poison. He got up in a rage and shouted to his men. Bind this traitor hand and foot and take him to the court. He put on his clothes and departed from the hammam without having his bath. When Abusir was taken to the court, the king was talking to the captain of his ships. Take this scoundrel with you, the king told the captain. Put him in a gunny sack along with limestone, tie up the sack and throw it into the sea so that he will die a horrible death cooked in lime. The captain could say nothing except, yes, your highness. But while taking Abusir home with him, he asked him, what did you do to make the king so angry with you? I thought you were a very good man. I did nothing, but for nothing the king would not punish me. He loved me a lot, said Abusir. In any case, I cannot put you to such a horrible death. Take a net and go to the island in the sea. Stay there fishing till dark. The king's cook will be coming for fish after dark. Meanwhile, I shall put a log of wood in the sack and throw it into the sea. We can learn the truth later, the captain told Abusir. The barber took a fishing net and departed for the island and the captain put a log of wood and two mounds of limestone in a sack and tied it up. He put a sack in a small boat and rowed towards the palace. At the top window, the king was sitting. He waved his hand indicating that the sack should be thrown into the water. When he did so, something flashed in the air and fell into the water. The captain threw the sack in the water and hot bubbles and steam rose up. Meanwhile, Abusir caught a lot of fish till evening. He was very hungry, having had nothing to eat since morning. So he wanted to roast a fish and eat it before starting. He chose a big fish and cut it open with his knife. Inside it, he found something sparkling and took it out. At once he knew it was the king's signet ring. Allah alone knows all things, thought Abusir. For it was impossible for him to guess how a fish should swallow the king's signet ring, then fall into his net and then again be picked up by him for his lunch. He went to the captain's house, showed him the ring and said, This must be restored to the king at once. Without it, he will be badly handicapped. I am going to hand it over to him. The captain was frightened because if the king saw Abu Sir, he would know that the captain did not carry out his order. Do not worry, Abusir advised the captain. Allah sees everything. At least I shall be able to know from the king what my fault was. The king was amazed to see Abusir. How did you escape from the sack? 
he asked. Abusir told the king all that had happened and handed over the signet ring to him. The king was touched at the barber's sense of duty. You appear to be a good man, a faithful man, the king said. How is it that you attempted to kill me? I never made any such attempt, your highness, Abusir replied. Somebody poisoned your mind against me. It was none other than Abukir the dyer, the king said. It appears that your wife and children are imprisoned by some sultan and you have undertaken to poison me in order to get them free. I have found out that you put white arsenic in the paste which you wanted to apply to my body. Do you deny it? Abusir was astounded and speechless for some time. Then he said, I have done my best to Abukir. I never did him the least harm. Yet he stole my money, had me beaten without any reason and then planned to get me put to death. He came to the hammam like a friend, appreciated all the arrangements except the lack of depilatory paste. He then went to you and complained that I was going to kill you. What is one to think of such a false friend? You say it is not poison? The king asked. No, your highness, it's quite harmless. In our country, everyone uses it. Only it slipped my mind until that man brought it to my notice, said Abusir. Tell me all the mischief he did to you so that I can punish him, the king said. Abusir related to the king what all had happened. The king sent for the watchmen of the Sirai and the slaves of the Tyre. The watchman recognized Abusir and told the king how his friend went away with all the money of Abusir when he was unconscious with fever. The slaves confessed that they had once thrashed Abusir at the command of their master Abukir. The king at once ordered the arrest of Abukir who was brought bound hand and foot. On seeing him, the watchman of the Sirai said, Yes, this was the fine gentleman who slept all the time and woke up only to have his food and who stole the money of this man when he was laid up with fever. Every word of Abusir's statement was proved true even as Abukir's guilt was fully established. Tie up this man in a sack of limestone and throw him in the sea. The king ordered his servants. Abusir begged the king to pardon his old friend but the king said, Even if you forgive him for what he did to you, I am not going to forgive him for what he did to me. Abukir was tied up in a sack of limestone and thrown into the sea according to the king's order. He died a horrible but well-deserved death. Later, when the king sent for Abusir and asked him, What can I do for you? Abusir replied, Let me go back to my country. I do not feel happy here anymore. The king heaped all sorts of gifts upon Abusir and arranged a ship for him to go to Alexandria. While going on the boat one day, Abusir saw a sack floating on the water. He got it pulled into the boat, opened it and found the remains of his faithless friend Abukir in it. He took the corpse to Alexandria, buried it there and had a handsome tomb built over it. The false friend was still a friend. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Do provide your feedback in the comment section below. Thanks for listening.